All right, this is the uh, voiceover for section 2.2, the algebra of functions. So let me start by starting the uh, slideshow. Objectives, find the sum, the difference, the product, and the quotient of two functions, and determine the domain domains of the resulting functions. And then the last thing is finding the, what's called the difference quotient. I'd introduced this back uh, back in section one, two, and I told you that we would discuss it in length. Sums, differences, products, and quotients. If f and g are functions and x is in the domain of each, then f plus g of x is f of x plus g of x. f minus g of x is the first f of x minus g of x. f g of x implies multiplication. Taking the f of x function, you're multiplying it times the g of x function. F divided by G of X is F of X divided by G of X, provided that G of X, of course, does not evaluate to zero because zero division by zero is undefined. These four videos are in Canvas in this particular module. I think it's Friday 7, could be 7, 7, I'm not sure. Um, but they are in Canvas, so I'm not going to take the time to show them out of uh, PowerPoint, but you can watch them here or click on the individual videos in Canvas. Given that f of x is x plus 1, g of x is the square root of x plus 3, find each of the following. f plus g of x, well, I'm simply taking the f function, which is x plus 1, and adding to that the g function, which is radical x plus 3. This cannot be simplified. You're done. F plus G of X is X plus 1 plus radical X plus 3. Now he's asking me to find F plus G of the number 6. F plus G of 6 simply is F of 6 plus G of 6. Substituting 6 into the F function, 6 plus 1 more is 7. Substituting 6 into the G function, 6 plus 3 is 9. Square root of 9 is 3. Finally, 7 plus 3, sum is 10. He says, first, for letter C, he says, first we need to determine whether um, f of negative 4 is in the domain here. Notice, if I put it in place of x, I put in negative 4. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. The square root of negative 1 is an imaginary number. All right, he says, we note that 4 is not in the domain of g. Therefore, f plus g of negative 4 doesn't exist because g of negative 4 is an imaginary number. All right, so be careful of that. All right, you can put numbers in a domain that lead to something that's a real number. Imaginary numbers are not obviously real. And then something, if I had a fraction and the denominator worked out to be zero, I could use that number because division by zero is undefined. If f and g are functions, then the domain of the functions f plus g, f minus g, and f times g is the intersection of the domain of f and the domain of g. The domain of f divided by g is also the intersection of f and g with the exclusion that any value of x for which g of x is zero cannot be used because it will result in something that's um, undefined. Given that uh, f of x is x squared plus 4, g of x is x plus 2, find each. The domain of f plus g. All right, the domain of f is a set of all real numbers. A set of, uh, the domain of g is a set of all real numbers. Notice you don't have any fraction here, nor do you have a radical. Same here with g of x, so all real numbers will be fine. It says the domain of f plus g and f minus g and f times g are the set of numbers in the intersection of the domains. That is a set of. The numbers are in both the domain, both domains. Well, since the both domains contain all real numbers, their intersection is all real numbers. Now, f divided by g says we must exclude negative two. If I'm taking this function and I'm dividing it by this function, this is in my denominator. If I replace x with negative two, the denominator here becomes zero, and that would leave you something that's undefined. So negative two is not in the domain of uh, f divided by g because substituting in uh, negative 2 in the g function leads to 0. And if you've got a quotient here, you can't have a denominator whose value is 0. All right, he's asking me now to add the two functions. Here's the f function. There's the g function. Adding the two, combining that. No like terms. Well, 
other than the negative 4 and a positive 2 combined is negative 2. Taking the f function, subtracting the g function, this minus sign is distributed into the two terms inside. This becomes a negative x and a negative 2, combining like terms x squared minus x minus 6. Multiplication of the first function times the second. You've got to foil this out. And this is what the product would look like, taking these two uh, binomials and foiling them. The quotient, all right, taking the f function, dividing it by the g function, you recognize that the numerator is the difference of squares factors into x plus 2 and x minus 2. The x plus 2s would cancel out. g, g of x, take the g function, multiply it by itself, or g of x squared, take something and multiply it by itself, means to square it. x plus 2 quantity squared, you've got to foil this. You just can't square the first term and the second x plus 2 times x plus 2 foiling is x squared plus 4x plus 4. This is something that we would do if we were in class. Same thing there. The difference quotient just takes a lot of time to figure it out. It's just, but the good news is you get a lot of cancellation. All right, difference quotient. It's f of f plus x minus f of x, all that divided by h. And what he explains here is that this line connecting any two points on this curve, to calculate the slope of this line, right, would lead to this difference quotient, all right? This line here is what's called a secant line. If you go on to study pre-cal, you'll talk about, you'll study secants. All right, difference quotient. For the function given by uh, f of x equal to 2x minus 3, find the difference quotient. Well, here it is. So, what he's asking me to do here is in place of x, I need to find f of x plus h. In place of x, I'm going to substitute f plus x. I'm going to subtract this f of x and then divide that difference by h. All right, so it says 2 times x. In place of x, in place of x, I'm substituting x plus h. Uh, distributing the 2, it would be 2x plus 2h, and then there's the minus 3, minus whatever f of x is, all right? So this minus sign in front of the function changes the signs of the terms inside. And what ends up happening, you get all kind of cancellation. The 2x's cancel out, and um, the 3's... This is a, a misnomer here, all right, because this, this should have been a minus 3 here. This is a mistake, all right. This minus 3 should have been repeated here. All right, I mean, a minus 2 out of it. A minus 3 and a positive 3 cancel themselves out. All right, just leaving you 2x in the numerator. I should have looked at this prior to doing that. That should have been a minus 3. A minus 3 and a positive 3 would cancel out. So this just simplifies simply the H's cancel out just to two. And let me just do this. And of course I can't change it because it's whatever. My bad. All right. All right, so just finished that one. All right. For the function f given by f of x equal to 2x squared minus x minus 3. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky, a little cumbersome, right? He's asking me to take the x and square it. So, find, he says, first find f of x plus h. So, wherever I see x, I'm going to substitute x plus h. So, here I'm going to take x. I'm going to place of x. I'm substituting x plus h, but I'm squaring it. A minusing x, which is x plus h, and then finally a minus 3. Here I suggest that this happens quite often. All right, x plus h quantity squared. If you foil it, this is the product you're going to get when you foil this out. x squared minus, uh, plus 2xh plus h squared. The minus is going to be distributed, and you get your minus 3. Distributing the 2 times all three terms here, 2 times x squared is x 2x squared. 2 times 2xh is 4xh, 2 times h squared, 2h squared. So all we've done now is just find f of x plus h. Now the difference quotient says subtract whatever the f of x function is. Well, here's the f of x function. I got a minus sign preceding that. 
What that's going to do is change the three terms, the signs of the three terms inside. Now, this looks cumbersome, but you get a lot of cancellation. The 2x squared and the minus 2x squared cancel out. The minus 3 and the positive 3 cancel out. Um, and the minus, excuse me, the minus 2x squared and a positive 2x squared. So you get three sets of terms that cancel out. So this numerator just simplifies into 4xh plus 2h squared minus h. Now, in all these problems, and when you're squaring them, you're going to have a factor of h common in the numerator. Factoring out this common x, h term leaves me h times what's left, all right? And then the h in the numerator and the h in the denominator will always cancel out. And it simplifies down to this whole big thing just simplifies down to this trinomial because of the fact you get all sorts of nice cancellation, which is kind of nice. These are practice examples we would have done if we were face-to-face. -face. And that's pretty much it. All right, so you get some practice to do. Hope this helps.